Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'll be talking about all the best features of the Honor 20i. By the way guys, I've already made a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I'll be talking about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the main highlighting feature about this phone would be the display. This phone supports a 6.21 inch IPS display with the new 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio and a dot notch. It has 83.1% screen to body ratio and the bezels all around are quite slim. Specs aside, picture quality of this display is pretty good. Viewing angles and sunlight legibility is also pretty good. Now the next best thing about this phone would definitely be its overall design and build. On the front, there isn't anything new. It's the same old 2.5D curved glass, but on the back, this phone has a 3D curved fiberglass, which makes it look way more premium. Like all the other phones in this price segment usually come with a 2.5D glass, but because of this 3D curve, it fits pretty comfortably in the hand, feels great, and most importantly, it is pretty lightweight as well. Now going on next, this phone also comes with some pretty good cameras. On the rear, it has a 24 megapixel camera with f1.8 aperture and on the front, it has a 32 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture. These are some sample pictures. Now going on next, this phone also comes with a wide angle camera. On the rear, it has an 8 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture with 120 degree field of view. These are some sample pictures. Now going on next, this phone is also packing decent performance. This phone sports a Kirin 710 processor with Mali G51 MP4 GPU. It also has 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. And that's a lot of storage. Now when it comes to performance, this processor is not all that powerful but it is good enough for a regular task and some light gaming. Now going on next, this phone also comes with a face unlock feature and it is pretty fast. In well lit conditions, it unlocks the phone probably less than a second. It's fast but not as fast as the Oppo and Vivo phones. It's still usable. Even in low lighting conditions, it works and it is pretty fast. Now going on next, we also got some new gestures to navigate throughout the phone which are pretty similar to Android Q and Xiaomi's MIUI 10. Now once you enable these gestures, you can swipe from the left side or right side to go back, you can swipe from the bottom to go home, you can swipe and hold for recent tabs, and finally, you can swipe from the left side or right side to trigger Google Assistant. Personally, this is one of my favorite features on this phone. Next we have Digital Balance. Now this is a feature from stock Android which is supposed to help your digital life. It basically tracks everything that you do on your phone. It tracks how much time you're spending with each application and gives you the option to limit those apps usage. It's more like a digital detox application. Next we have bedtime. Now this is another feature from Google which is supposed to help you sleep faster at night. Now once you set it up at a scheduled time, your phone display goes grayscale and it will block applications. So if you're too addicted to using your phone late at night, this feature can be quite helpful. Now going on next, this phone also comes with a dedicated night mode, which is supposed to take better pictures even in low lighting conditions. These are some sample shots taken with normal mode and the night mode. Now going on next, this phone also supports dual SIM with dual 4G and dual LTE. And now, you also get native video calling support. Now going on next, we have a feature called high touch. Now once you enable this feature, you can hold down two fingers on any image on your phone and high touch will search for that product and shows you where you can buy it. Next, it has portrait mode for both the front and rear cameras. These are the sample pictures. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job with edge detection. Now on this phone, portrait mode for rear camera only works if it can recognize your face. So if it can't identify you as a human subject, then it takes a normal picture. That's where aperture mode comes in. Now next feature is obviously the aperture mode. Now this feature allows you to take portrait shots of objects or literally anything. It doesn't have to be a human subject, it can be anything and you can still take a portrait shot. Now unlike your regular portrait shot, you can also change the aperture, that's the amount of background blur effect, before taking a picture. And even after taking a picture, we can change the focus point and the blur intensity. Next, 
this phone has a dedicated AI mode for both the front and rear cameras. Now once you turn it on, AI mode automatically detects the scene and enhances the image to make it look better. So let's say you are taking a picture of a waterfall, food, flower or a dog, depending upon the scene or the subject, it will enhance some details. Most of the time images just look a bit more saturated, but sometimes it also plays with dynamic range. At the end of the day, it's all about personal preference and if you don't like the super saturated colors, you want a more natural look. You can always disable AI mode before taking a picture and even after taking a picture, you can disable it. Now even for the front facing camera, we have something called AI selfie. Once again, it detects things like sky, plant, flower, beach and enhances few details to make your selfie look better. Once again, it makes colors look super popped out and if you don't like the effect, you can always disable it before and even after taking a picture. Next it has 3D lighting mode or simply studio lighting effect where you can change the lighting effects to soft light, butterfly light, split light, stage light and even classic lighting. Using all these different lighting effects, you can get different kind of portrait shots. Next we have AR lens. Now under this category we have 4 different features but I am just gonna talk about 2 features right now. Now the first one is effects. Now using this particular feature you can add different stickers to your face and simply spice up your selfie game. Next we have backgrounds where you can change the background of a subject to something animated. Both features give you different results and right now, effects work better. Next we have moving picture mode. Once you enable this mode and take a picture, your phone will record few seconds as video and you can watch it by simply long pressing that picture. It just allows you to capture a nice memory along with the picture. Next we have an application called scan now. In the default camera application, there is a dedicated button on the top left corner of the screen with an eye symbol. Once you click it up, it will open the scan application where you get two options. One is for shopping and another one is to scan a QR code. In the shopping section, once you point your phone at any object, your phone tries to recognize it using Amazon Assistant and gives you the product links for that product on Amazon.in. It's just like high touch but you can use it with the camera application. Next we have App Twin. Now this feature allows you to use two instances of the same application on the same phone. Let's say you have two WhatsApp numbers or two WhatsApp accounts or two Facebook accounts and you want to use them on the same phone, then you can do it using this feature. In the same way we can have two WeChat accounts, two Instagram accounts and so on. It's a really nice feature but right now we can only use it for limited applications. Like if you want to use two Paytm accounts on the same phone, we still can't do it. Next we have Hiss and Sound Enhancement. Now this phone doesn't come with any dedicated DAC or an amplifier but comes with a software based enhancement where you can change the type of headset you use for better audio experience. It even has an equalizer setting to tweak the audio to your preference and finally it even has 3D audio settings to tweak the audio further. Overall, it definitely gives you a slightly better audio experience on the headset when compared to a regular phone out there. Next, we have a lot of fingerprint gestures. First one would be to take pictures using the fingerprint scanner. Now once you enable this toggle in the stock camera application, we can take a picture and even start video recording just by touching the fingerprint scanner. Unlike other phones, we need to touch and hold the fingerprint scanner to take a picture or start video recording. Next, we can even pull down the notification bar using the fingerprint scanner. Now once you enable this toggle, you can swipe down on the fingerprint scanner to pull down the notification bar. You can swipe it up again to send back the notification bar. Now this might not seem like a huge feature, but once you get addicted to it, you will really miss it on other phones. Next, we can even browse photos using the fingerprint scanner. Now once you enable this feature, you can swipe on the fingerprint scanner left or right to change the pictures in the default gallery application. Now this feature might come in handy if you have to use your phone single handedly. Now finally, we can even answer calls and stop alarms using the fingerprint scanner just by enabling these two toggles. Here's a quick preview. Next we have 3 finger screenshot. Now before I show you how to use that, let me show you how to take a normal screenshot. To take a screenshot on your phone, simply press the volume down button and power button both at the same time and once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. For some reason, if that's a little hard for you, this phone even has a notification toggle to take a screenshot. Just go to the notification area, swipe down, click the screenshot toggle to take a screenshot. Now finally, if you want something much more easy, you have the 3 finger screenshot. Once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Personally, this is my favorite way to take a screenshot and these days almost all the phones support this feature. Next we have long screenshot. 
Now for some reason if you want to take a longer screenshot, first take a regular screenshot. You can use either gestures, buttons or anything you want. And once you get a preview, click the scroll shot option to take a long screenshot. Next we have flip to mute. Once you enable this feature by enabling these two toggles, you can simply flip your phone to mute an incoming call, alarm or a timer. Here's a quick preview. Next we have pick up to reduce volume. Once you enable these two toggles, every time you get a call or an alarm, once you pick up your phone, volume reduces automatically to make your phone less annoying. I find this feature really useful. Next we have pick up to wake. Now just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can simply pick up your phone to wake it up. This feature might come in really handy if you like the face unlock feature. You can simply raise your phone to wake it up, it scans your face and unlocks your phone in an instant. On the whole, you get a much more immersive experience. Next we have touch disable mode. Now this feature prevents accidental touches when your phone is in your pocket. It is also known as pocket mode on other phones. Next we have ultra power saving mode. Now once you enable this feature, all the applications running in the background will be killed and you will be given access to only 6 applications. 3 of these applications are fixed and you can choose other 3 applications. Now except for these 6 applications, you can't use anything on your phone. Now this feature limits your usage but greatly improves your battery life. By the way in this mode, we can still use Wi-Fi and mobile data and stay connected to the internet and use apps like WhatsApp and Instagram and still have long battery life. Next we have low resolution mode or smart resolution. Now once again using this feature, we can improve the battery life by changing the screen resolution. Now we can do it automatically by selecting smart resolution or you can manually change the resolution to full HD plus or HD plus to further improve the battery life. Now this is one of those rare features we see only on these phones. Anyway going on next, I'll show you how to enable auto call recording on your phone. Just open the phone dialer, press the three dotted button then go to settings, then select automatic record calls and from here you can choose to record all the calls or listed contacts. Usually I try to record all the calls. By the way guys this feature is available in India but it might not be available in other countries. So I can't be sure about that. Next we have mirror share. Now using this feature we can cast the screen of your phone to a display which supports mirror cast. By the way I tried it with Chromecast but for some reason it didn't work. Anyway, next we have Wi-Fi Bridge. Now this feature makes your phone act like a hotspot or a router and share internet access to other devices. Now unlike your regular mobile hotspot, this feature actually shares internet from an existing Wi-Fi connection. Now you might think you will never use this feature. Now let's say you're in a fancy hotel or an airport and you're given internet access only for one device. So in this situation, you can use this Wi-Fi Bridge feature to share this single internet connection with other devices. Next we have app launch in battery settings. Now this is one particular feature that can improve your battery life drastically. By default all the app launchers are managed by your phone. But if you want to manage them yourself, from here you can restrict unnecessary auto launch and restrict an application even from running in the background. To keep it simple, it gives you a lot of control over the applications that are installed on your phone. Next we have battery optimization. Usually many people complain about low battery life without knowing what's actually draining the battery on their phone. Especially with our parents or elderly people. Now using this feature just with a click of a single button, you can make some changes to improve battery life. By the way, it also suggests you to disable auto sync just in case if you did that, enable it manually. I know this isn't a great feature, but it comes in build and it's great for a very basic user. Next we have party mode. Now the speaker on this phone is sufficiently loud, but if you're really in a party or if you want a lot of sound, and you don't have a dedicated speaker, you can pair up all the Huawei and Honor phones and play the same song from all the phones at the same time to get a more surround sound experience. It's a really cool feature. I wish all the phones could support that. Next we have a screen recorder built into the phone. I don't know who wants it, but for some reason if you want to record the screen of your phone, then we can do it in two ways. First we can use a notification toggle or you can press the volume up and power button both at the same time to start recording the screen. To stop video recording, you can press the stop button on the left side of the status bar. Once you're done, you can find the recorded video in your gallery. Next we have scheduled power on and power off. I don't know who needs this or why, but if you want to automatically turn off your phone and turn it on automatically at a specific time, 
we can do it using this feature. We can also set it up to happen automatically on regular intervals on any day of the week. Now this feature is just like Apple's AirDrop but just for Huawei and Honor phones. Now once you enable this feature on two Honor phones or two Huawei phones, we can share files, links and any kind of data between these two phones easily over Wi-Fi just like share it. Next we have Navigation Dock. Now once you enable this feature, you can see a floating bubble on the screen and you can use that bubble to navigate throughout the phone. You can simply touch to go back, touch and hold to go home, you can touch and hold and then swipe for recent apps and finally you can simply swipe the bubble to move it around. Now this is once again a super handy feature to use your phone single handedly. Next this phone comes with an application called phone manager pre-installed and it does a lot of things. For starters it has something called network lab where you can block internet access over wi-fi or mobile data to any application or literally all the applications. Next we can also block calls and messages from specific contacts. We can also choose to block all unknown numbers or all strangers that usually call over internet. We can also clear the RAM, do a virus scan, change permissions and lot more. Next we have eye comfort mode. On other phones this feature is called as reading mode or night mode but on this phone it's just called as eye comfort mode. You can access it from the notification toggles or the display settings. Once you enable this feature it puts a warm tint on the screen to protect your eyes at night by filtering the blue light. We can also enable it automatically based on the time and even change the intensity of the warm tint. Next we have an app lock built into the system. Now just like the name suggests, it's an app lock and we can lock applications using this feature. To unlock a locked application, we can either enter the password or use the fingerprint scanner, which is a really nice shortcut. Next we have a file safe built into the system. Now just like the name suggests, it's a place where you can hide files and protect files. You can set it up with a different password from your app lock or your screen lock. Using this feature, you can easily hide photos, videos and literally anything on your phone. Next we have ride mode. Now once you enable this feature, you just get two options, either to use your phone dialer or send an SOS signal. Basically, this feature restricts you from using your phone while driving. From settings, you can get additional options, auto answer, auto answer by text and even ride tracking. It's a nice feature, but I wish we could automate it, like once you start the ride, it automatically turns on and once you stop the ride, it automatically stops. Anyway, going on next, we have phone clone. Now using this particular feature or an application, you can transfer all your data from your older phone to this phone or all your data from this phone to your newer phone. It's not a big feature, but it will help you move all your data from your older phone to your newer phone. So guys, those were the important features. We also have a lot more stuff like themes, SOS mode, simple mode, AI based features to improve battery life and performance. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. If you're planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.